let's reset. Let's go back to the beginning. Not the okay. very beginning. You can if you want, but um, what I am really interested in, and I, I and I was thinking about this the other day also. I ne we never really sat down. I think we talked a little bit about, and if you don't feel comfortable, it's, I understand. But um, I, we only talked a little bit about your operation just cause like we like you mentioned a couple of things you didn't talk that much about it um and if like i said if it's if it's hard to talk about we don't have to but i always found it interesting that there's guys like you that you know that nobody ever even knew was there you know you, they just they heard rangers jumped in in 82nd and you know some seals were there but then they forget that guys like you were you know instrumental in that operation you know doing good things and i don't know if you wanted to like t tell take us from when you first yeah. found out you were going to, you know, I'll be glad to. So that back then we were e tax, right? And so right. We, we were also very unusual, just like the you know seventeenth is today, um, and the, throughout the career field, we were very unusual then too. We you know one e tax per company that was unheard of. Um, so yeah. I was a uh, I was aligned with uh, Bravo Company Third Battalion, um, and that's who I was aligned with the whole time I was there at the first time, okay. um, and. Um, so we actually rehearsed uh, invading Panama. It was like a year long of rehearsals. We were practicing all the different places to go and um, uh, all the different types of missions that we would do. I mean, they were building mock towers and different things like that. I remember on one time um, they wanted to put uh, myself and the fire support guys up in the top of a tower that they built out of scaffolding. It was pretty high. Um, <laughs> and, had to shimmy up to the top of that thing with all that heavy radio gear. You know, we didn't have, you know, the light stuff. Yeah. And for some reason on the way back down, I decided to go ahead and tie in, you know, you remember the old rope belts we used to use oh, yeah. to the rope tie. And sure enough, I slipped and there I'm hanging upside down off of this scaffolding <laughs> tower. <laughs> thinking, Man, what am I doing? You know? <laughs> but, you know, you don't think about it. But, you know, the funny thing is we rehearsed that for probably close to a year. And every time, you know, I, I was supposed, the first person I was always supposed to link up with was the fire, the company fire support officer. And we would never find each other until we got to our assembly point, you know. Yeah. Uh, never, ever. But when we yeah. jumped in the path, we landed right next to each other. It was just kind of crazy. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. What are the odds? Yeah. But I remember, um, you know, we it got delayed a couple of times because they were trying to tie it in with uh, everybody leaving at the same times, you know, or leaving in succession so that we would all get there at the same time. Right. Uh -huh. um, and, and the weather was real bad at Bragg. So the 82nd guys weren't able to take off and stuff like that. And I guess the decision was made some point or another for us to go ahead and take off. It was freezing at Fort Benning that, that day. Oh, really? um, it was pretty cold and rainy and wet and getting on, the, getting on the bird and, um, and they didn't do a straight flight because they didn't want um, uh, Cuba to give us away. Uh, so they kind of went way out of the way, away from Cuba. Because uh, otherwise, you know, you would fly straight past Cuba. To sure. Um, yep. So I, I think it was like an eight-hour flight. That uh, so it was a long flight. I remember. Did you guys? Did you guys? Were you rigged up, or did you in-flight rig on the way there? We, we were rigged up already, <sighs> and so it was an eight-hour flight rigged up. Oh my um, God. Everything, you were completely rigged up. And so you, you know, you remember how in at one thirty, you know, you had your rucksack sitting on your knees and then the dude across from you, his rucksack sitting on your knees too, you know? Um, and I was way Jeez. up in the front by the little windows. I was way up in the front yep. by the little windows. So it was packed in there tight. Um, oh my God. But, you know, and I, of course, you know, when you're in that position, you got to pee real bad, right? <laughs> of course, and, of course. But, I Never think it was about three hours into it. They passed, they were passing around a piddle pack. And by the time it got to me, it was already overflowing, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> first of all, how did oh anybody gosh. pee in that thing when they're all rigged up the way they were? And, <laughs> and I'm like, hell no, I'm not even going to touch that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I, I, I remember I had like, um, a JSOC surgeon on one side of me and, I think it was a chaplain on the other side of me or something like that. So it was just an odd position to be in. Um, yeah. I, I remember looking around the, the aircraft and, and this will tie into something later, but I remember looking around the aircraft and seeing all the guys. And I kept thinking, you know, I, I was 25 then. 
Um, and your average ranger was, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old. I just kept sure. thinking, boy, I'm, go I'm going to war with a bunch of kids because they looked right. like kids to me at that point, even though, you know, 25, I'm a kid too, basically. But to me, they looked like kids. And I'm thinking, holy crap, I'm going to war with a bunch of kids. Um, <laughs> but I still wouldn't have wanted to go to war with anybody else other than the rangers. And that's been right. true ever, forever, ever time. Um, but um that's that's what was running through my mind was man just they look like a bunch of kids you know uh so we get you know we get closer and uh it's coming time you know it, they black out the aircraft and, and back then you know they didn't have the little blue lights that they had in the aircraft now they didn't they right. didn't even have chem lights they didn't light anything up with chem lights and when it was blacked out it was blacked out i mean you basically yeah. had to feel around to see the person in front of you but uh the fact we were going pretty low and the fact that we had um I had was up by the little windows. Uh, I could see outside, you know, so I could see the explosions when the one seventeens hit the, um, uh, their targets. Yeah. Uh, so you knew you were close, but let me back up a little bit. When we were, let me back up a whole lot then. So when <laughs> we got, when we got recalled for the, uh, actual invasion, uh, we were having our Christmas party, our unit Christmas oh. party. And, and everybody was pretty much uh, toasted at that point. <laughs> all of our pagers went off at once and oh, that's no. never a good thing. Right. And so we right, all looked right. at each other. Okay. It's time finally. And, you know, everybody. Yeah. You've probably been waiting that. for like, you know, a year yeah, to do this thing. So I knew it was coming. We were expecting, you know? Um, yeah. So here we are with all of our families and everything, our girlfriends and everybody. And, and uh, drunk as a skunk. And all of our pagers go off. We have one more shot to go and we all go into work uh, drunk, of well, course. Real quick, who all who all was there at the time? Like who 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 was who was it that you know all went with you? Um, so at the battalion, uh Valella was in charge. Uh we had uh, a couple ALOs, um, and forgive me for not remembering everybody's names. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, banging my head too many times, I think. Um <laughs> And then uh, uh, Avance was at the battalion at the time, I think. And um, uh, uh, Kibby was there. Um, so, you know, there was only three enlisted and one at the battalion level and then two ALOs. So I'm pretty sure that's who we had at the battalion level. And then we had, you know, guys at the regiment too. But, uh, sure, sure. So it was, it was a good team. Um, but, uh, that's, you know, when we got, that's when I found out what a 117 was, when we got to our offices, they had laid a, a, a folder on, uh, Valella's desk and it said top secret. Well, back then none of us had top secret clearances, you know, that wasn't, right, right. You just, they just didn't do that. Sure. And so we're all, we're all looking at each other like, uh, what's this about? And how much trouble are we going to get in? Because we have a top secret <laughs> document sitting on the desk. And then one of the ALOs came in and said, Every, he, everybody needs to read this. Um, so, and then I read it. And that's when I, that's when I learned about a 117. I didn't even know there was a such thing. Before. Yeah, they're like brand new. But yeah, then, yeah, they, that's right. Well, yeah, that's I guess right. they've been around for a while, but they hadn't, they had not. They Nobody knew them. about them. Yeah. 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 So, um, now going back into being in that aircraft. So you see, I see the explosions, you know, we're really low um, and they're flying in just above the water. So they got to bump up to the jump altitude, um, which you, apparently it, we only jumped, bumped up to 450 feet. So that was my second 450 foot jump. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, but uh, so as we're coming in, um, you know, by the window and everybody's starting to do with their thing. And you, know, you can see the tracers going through the sky and all that stuff. And um, from what I understand later is we had actually had a couple of people shot in the aircraft. I remember stepping over people, um, I, but you know, it was like so dark, you really couldn't tell, you know, sure. the, the light, the light that you were getting was the ambient light from the ground at the door, you know? So I remember somebody hesitating in the door, a few people in front of me and then, um, they basically got pushed out of the aircraft and I found out somebody told me later that they were possibly shot while they were in the door or whatever. Oh so I'm, thinking, you know, I'm in that, 
aircraft. And the, first, the only thing I'm thinking about is I want to get out of this airplane. I want to get out of this airplane. Get me out of this airplane because I'm like, I don't want to crash right. and die in an airplane, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. And I jump out and there's tracers going everywhere, all over the place. And I'm thinking, I want to get back in that airplane. I got to get back in that airplane. <laughs> exactly. I just wanted to, like, but. And, then, and a little bit, of, I mean, a 450 foot jump, you don't have a lot of time, right? No, you I, I still managed to get my pistol out of my leg holster. We had leg holsters, and oh. we were probably the only people who did. And because I'm thinking, I'm getting on the ground, I want to be able to, you know. Oh, you pulled it out in the air. To. I pulled it out of the air. Nice, I managed to pull nice. it out of the air. Um, <laughs> because we had our, our rifles in the cases. Um, yeah. You know, we were always told before that you're always going to jump at exposed if you jump into combat. You're not going to jump in the case, but. They have demonstrated to us that you can actually get it out of the case faster than you could sure. get than you could get it off of your side, you know, because when it's strapped in. So, but you know, I had my pistol out because yeah, you had that quarter inch cotton webbing you had to tie off, and you had a bunch yeah. of other stuff you had to do to jump it exposed. Yeah. It just seemed real yeah. cumbersome. It you was. And so, and they, I mean, everybody at first was like, "Oh no, I'm going to jump mine exposed." Well, they demonstrated that, and so we, you know, we were good. But, um, so. I landed in the worst possible place I can land. I landed in the middle of the runway. Um, oh, and there, there was this tracer fire going all over the place. And oh, I, I was laying on my back and my parachute was collapsed. It wasn't pulling on me or anything like that. But um, I, I was kind of nervous because the tracers were kind of like right over me, you know, like within a foot going, you know, back and forth. So I, I didn't want to roll up or stand up or get anything like that. And I, you know, I have a tendency to do dumb things, which this is probably one of the dumber things I've ever done. <laughs> um, you know, how many times have you gotten, you jumped and, you know, you pull your cape wells and you're free of your parachute, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for some reason, I totally forgot that step. And I broke out my, remember the old orange uh, switchblade knives? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. You can hardly cut hot butter with. Um, right. <laughs> I took those and like in one swipe cut myself out of my harness. <laughs> and I'm like, I had to be pure adrenaline to do that because <laughs> Yeah. You know, I mean, get through that thick, you know, webbing and everything with yeah. that knife. And, and, yeah, yeah. Like I said you can't even cut warm butter with those knives normally. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I just like sliced right through that sucker. So it had to be sheer adrenaline that got me through that. Oh yeah. I got out of my parachute, got my stuff together, and um the um, fire support officer had landed just off the runway and right next to me. So he's right there. And nice. the funny thing I, I just remember he's, there's really tall grass. And so he's just standing up and putting his stuff together. Like it's, you know, like we did every exercise for the past year, you know, I'm thinking, what are you doing? And so I run over, I managed, to, there was a break in the shooting and I run over to the side and I'm like, Lieutenant, what are you doing? He goes, I'm getting my stuff together. I said, and you could hear the bullets going whoosh, 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 all over. Oh my God. Know? And I'm like, sir, do you hear that? He's like, yeah, what is that? I said, those are bullets. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so then he kind of you know, <laughs> sunk in, you know, like, oh crap, you know? So we got Whoops. crap. You got, we got his stuff together and uh, we started heading out to our assembly point and um, we came, there's, um, America's one was a highway that ran right through Rio Hato that we jumped into Rio Hato and there was an intersection right there. So there was a pretty good gunfight going on there. Well, unfortunately for us, our assembly area is on the other side of that intersection. And you know, so there was a lot of, of uh, shooting going on and stuff like that, but there was a, a ranger that was laying out. I mean, he was basically kind of sitting um, and he was in the middle of all that and he was just there, you know? And so there was a, a couple medics. I think they were JSOC guys that were um, sitting there waiting, you know, because everybody's just kind of waiting for this firefight because you can't get past it because there was that much shooting going on. Right. And then, um, so I'm like, I turned to the fire support officer. I said, we got to go get, we got to go get that guy. And he's like, oh, hell no, we're not going out there. And I said, oh, <laughs> hell yeah, we are. And yeah. so, <laughs> um, run out there I grab i grab the guy he grabs his equipment and we drag him back to where we just came from and then i think man i'm really stupid man because we, why didn't we drag him why to you just side? go the other way yeah why because because <laughs> as we were running out there um somebody had fired a law rocket and the law rocket goes right in front of us 
and it's like moving in slow motion. You can just kind of watch it moving, flying right in front of us, and it's like slow motion. And it hits this gas truck, and it explodes, but the gas truck doesn't explode, um, which is not saying much for law rockets. But um, right, right. right. Uh, but yeah, you know, just kind of watching that thing fly right in front of me as I'm running out to get this guy. But like an idiot, we run back to where we just came from. <laughs> And now we're sitting over there and the firefight's still going on. The medics start taking care of this guy. And um, so the lieutenant turns to me, goes, all right, we got to go to our assembly point. I'm like, oh, hell no, we're not going across that. <laughs> well, I just pulled on him, but he pulled on me <laughs> right before that. I'm like, oh, hell no, we're not going. He goes, yes, we are. <laughs> he starts running. I'm like, crap, I hate that guy. So we run across all that then, again, yeah. right through that firefight again to get to our assembly point. But we made it there. There was a, yeah, we were, we had a Bravo company took a lot of casualties uh, for for that conflict, and um, we, we were pretty busy. You know, we had AC one thirties, we had little birds, we had A sevens back then. Uh, nice. But uh, we had a you know a fair amount of casualties, so we were having to try and take care of them too. Yeah, we had one guy who had gotten shot. And it was just a graze wound basically across his knee, but it opened his knee wide open. But it, the, the flesh was, it wasn't bleeding, you know? So the medics were all tied up and I'm thinking, you know, back then they always made us carry uh, sewing kits and all that stuff. And our, you know, your standard rat, uh, ranger uh, packing, uh, yeah, yeah. I had a sewing kit in there. So thinking, all right, I got a sewing needle and a <laughs> thread. So basically sewed them up with that sewing kit. Oh my God. And he went on his way. I had a medic stop me a couple of days later. He goes, are you the one to use the sink? And I'm thinking, oh, he's going to yell at me. I'm like, I'm screwed. He goes, you did a pretty good job. <laughs> right on. <laughs> but it was kind of funny. But uh, so it was pretty hectic that first night, uh, you know, because you're trying to get aircraft to come in. We had an aircraft suck up some parachutes. And, uh, you know, because once we hit the ground, then they started bringing aircraft in. Right. Uh, to land with equipment and stuff like that. They had drum, they have dropped some RSOVs and stuff like that, uh, gun jeeps, and they landed off the drop zone. Some of them landed in the woods, some of them landed in the swamp. Um, they had rangers that had landed outside of the drop zone and had to fight their way into the drop zone to turn around and be able to fight <laughs> back out, right? So it was just kind of crazy. Um, so there was people pretty much all over the place. So the first night was pretty hectic, but um, they reached all their goals and they did it pretty quickly. Uh, um, the next morning was kind of a cleanup session, but I'll tell you the, the best feeling was because the first night we, uh, we just kept on, you know, hearing about the casualties or the wounded or the, the failures, you know, you don't hear about all the successes that are going on. You just, you know, the failures are being reported to us. You know how it is in that little talk, you know, that yeah, little yeah. company level talk where it's, you know, you're the company commander and, and, and his little staff. And you're one of those guys as the, as the uh, e ETAC back then, but as the JTAC, right. you know, it's just that little circle. So you're getting all that bad news and you're just kind of getting, they're thinking, Oh crap, are we losing? You know what, you know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. You know? So, and then uh, one of the guys that was uh, listening, uh, one of the psyops, folks was listening to the local radio stations and they're putting out all this propaganda about how they were, you know, defeating us and all these other things. And yeah, yeah. which was, wasn't true, of course, but, sure. you know, but you're, you're hearing all that stuff, you know, and you're a fairly young guy, you start to believe it, but, right, right. but we were actually doing really well, but you know, you're, you're just getting the bad stuff coming back to you. Sure. Um, so in the morning when it came, the sun came up, uh, it was really nice to see the American flag flying, you know, and, uh, and a flag. Uh, so that, that kind of reboosted you. Um, then that day we had, uh, we did have a friendly fire incident uh, with a, with a little bird took out a squad and that was uh, not necessarily a good time or whatever, but uh, it was an incident. You know, we had to overcome it. Um, and then uh, we, started clearing this uh that I, for lack of a better term our company was clearing in our area was a like a recreation area or something i don't know um we came across yeah. uh, a ranger who had burned in he had obviously been shot um while he was in the air or whatever and burned in and 
he had he had mm-hmm. perished as well. Um, but I'm deliberately not mentioning any names because you know families. But for sure, uh, for sure. Yeah, I know it's been a long time, but still respect for them. Uh, but um, so you know that day two was kind of a little bit demoralizing in, in those aspects. But um, yeah, I've seen everything not, in the light today. I'm sure. Yeah, it was. Still, still, still had a lot of successes, and, and at that by that point, we already knew. You know, we were um, we had achieved our mission goals, and we were successful. Uh, at the it, things started kind of calming down. We secured the area, secured the airfield, um, and for the rest of the war, uh, everything that we did, the seventh ID would follow behind us. Right. So we, we would take something down and then they would come in and secure it after we were done. And, um, I just remember the first time the seventh ID guys come rolling in to take over things. Uh, we were transitioning out of perimeter security, pulling back in to go for our next mission. And they were, uh, going in the foxholes and, you know, there's, um, back in those days, there was two things that, uh, if you wanted to make a ranger happy, dip and right. sunflower seeds. You, know, you <laughs> always, tell, always tell us rangers were in town because there's sunflower seed uh, shells all over the place. You know, <laughs> so those two things. You know, those are like gold to rangers. Yeah, yeah. And um, I remember us. You know, we, we already pulled back in, and um, we heard an explosion. We're like, what, what the hell was that? You know, cause we, we had gotten mortared. They had launched a few mortars on us that second day. They didn't really hit anything. Um, but you know, they, uh, ste- stepping back just a little bit. Uh, one of the Rangers made fun of me because they, <laughs> they never saw me run so fast. We had, <laughs> uh, that second day we were getting the mortared and, um, they started walking the mortars in towards where we were. And I'm thinking, who the hell, how are they watching us? Well, yeah. they're probably one of the biggest tree that was around there. They were probably just going for that big tree. <laughs> so we did one of the, and the company commanders like, okay, we got to relocate. So, I mean, like I beat every ranger, all my heavy equipment, I beat every <laughs> ranger to the new relocation. <laughs> now get over there. Like we never saw you run so fast. <laughs> Well, you know, you, you, uh, Never had a reason to before. Honestly, yeah. a few mortars at me. I'm going to run fast. If I'm going <laughs> yeah. fast, I'm going to run faster. <laughs> so, uh, just backing up a little bit on that. But um, so uh, we heard an explosion. Well, we hadn't heard any real explosions for a day, basically, essentially mm-hmm. a day, because we had secured everything at that point. Um, so, shortly after that, and then all of a sudden the perimeter just lights up and it's just, goes like a went around the clock. It started at 12 o'clock and went all the way around. And all of a sudden there's this big giant firefight going on all over the place. Well, there was no enemy there. It's just the soldiers, you know, got next to them, started firing. So they all started firing. Oh my God. And um, this is seventh ID that was shooting. Yeah. So what had happened was some Rangers traded hand grenades for dip from the seventh ID guys. Well, apparently they weren't allowed to have hand grenades. Well, they proved it within the first five minutes of having a hand grenade because the guy blew himself up and is. Oh no. And so I remember the company first sergeant coming out and he just lighting into everybody. If any of you sons of bitches give a a trade hand grenades for dip anymore, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have you. Court martial, blah blah blah. It was just going off. Do not trade your hand grenades. Do not give them any ammo. Blah blah blah. Because it was just kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think our that sounds next about right though. Mission, but... Yeah, our, our next mission was uh, we uh, did a prisoners uh, took prisoners at a place called Panoma um, I just. It was very uncertain. The guy, the commander of that unit wanted to give up his unit, but we didn't really fully trust the guy. You know, I just remember um, he was with us and um, I just kind of remember, you know, uh, we're going to put that guy in front of us. He's going to be the first one off the helicopter. So if (laughs) if this is an ambush, he's going to pay the price, right? Yeah, Yeah, he's going to be the first one to get it. So uh, it wasn't an ambush. Um, they did surrender to us, but the funny thing about that was, um, they surrendered to us 
So we're kind of pulling security on them, facing inward, you know, pulling security for them. I mean, on them as prisoners until the, they're repatriating them or whatever, you know, making them saying, okay, we're, we're on your side now, which yeah. kind of blew, blew me away. We're fighting them one minute and then the next minute we're saying, okay, you're on our side. Um, but the local villagers came out and they wanted us to turn them over to them so that they could kill them. So now we had to turn around and face out to protect the prisoners instead of guarding the prisoners because the local villagers wanted to kill them. So, uh, and they were getting kind of rambunctious. And uh, so we were trying to think of ways to, because you didn't have non-lethal stuff back then, you know, there wasn't a lot of non-lethal stuff. So, um, and even if you did, I mean, you wouldn't jump at that stuff in, you would have your, your, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, we had an AC-130 overhead, and back then they had these spotlights on them um, where they could actually spotlight the ground, right? So yeah. uh, I thought, well, let me try that um, because they had the Panamanians as a whole by then had built up a fear of AC-130s. <laughs> so um, I had the AC-130s, and they didn't like doing that sort of thing because it you know, gives, gives them away, but sure. um, they knew it was civilians. And uh, my only other choice was maybe to put a few rounds down at a field, but – you know, I didn't, we didn't know if they, there were people in the field or not, you know, sure, right. didn't, the technology wasn't quite as good then as it is now. Right. Um, so I had them spotlight the crowd and that worked. I mean, it was like, he took a flashlight and on a bunch of bugs and they just scattered everywhere. <laughs> they just <laughs> took off. And that, that was the end of that. For the nice. of that. But, um, so that was, uh, you know, my, my, real big first mission was uh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, literally yeah we <laughs> we went into garrison for a day or two then we um on christmas day we took down they pronounced it the city of david but we took down the city of david on christmas day right. which it's got to be sacrilege i think somewhere <laughs> yes yeah, i'm gonna have to explain that one um <laughs> but it was a peaceful takedown i i we Got to the airport. It was fairly easy to, um, to take down. Uh, we had to go to the local um, barracks to again to repatriate the uh, Panamanian forces. Right, so we didn't have any yeah. real way to get there. So they loaded us up in those colorful Panamanian buses. Remember those buses? We're all and, oh yeah, yeah. And they put me and the fire support guys on the top so that we would we, we <laughs> control the aircraft overhead as on our convoy. So here comes the Rangers in those colorful buses down the road, you know, <laughs> <laughs> aircraft co- providing cover over top of us, which is kind of, you know, hilarious. And I look at it these days, yeah. you would never do that today, but <laughs> no, <laughs> it worked out there. We come pulling into town, but the town was very happy to see us. Um, it was another yeah. one of those situations where, you know, the locals basically thought, okay, this is our chance to take it out on the Panamanian forces that had been making us miserable for so long. And right. We ended up having to protect the Panamanians again. And um, we had a few other small missions, but you know, the, that had wound, wound down pretty quick, but yeah. we, we, we lost a few guys while we were there, a few casualties. We had a pretty good wounded guys um, during that, um, friendly fire incident. We had this one guy and again, I'm not mentioning any names, but he got shot on the buttocks. We, we didn't have body armor back then, but we had flak vests, right? But the flak vests were better than a normal flak vest. So they could stop around from a distance. Well, every round that hit him in his vest um, did not penetrate, but he had several rounds of his butt, you know, so (laughs) Oh, he damn. was mad because he's like, how am I supposed to go home and tell everybody I got shot in the ass? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't very happy about that. But because of that, because of him, uh, I kept my body armor on me all the time. And it was hot. Yeah. And it was miserable. Oh, yeah. But I left it on. And there was only a few of us that did. Most of the guys just dumped it right away because it was yeah. just hot and miserable. But and when guys would ask me, why haven't you dumped that yet? And I might ask and I won't mention his name, but ask him when you see him again and I'll, uh, he'll tell you why I wore that. 
because he would have been probably killed had he not had his body armor on. And because that stopped all those rounds. Yeah. That, you know, penetrated his torso. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping that crap. <laughs> I mean, that's a good decision. I mean, you just never know, you know, it's like, it's a trade off. Do you want to, I mean, you're miserable, but then if some clown, you know, takes a shot at you, you get a little more chance of surviving. Well, if you got it. How many times so. your body armor saved lives and, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, you ever see that video of that guy who got shot and hit him in the body armor and knocks him down, but he gets right back up. No. Like, <laughs> who, the, who the heck just shot me? He's looking around like who just shot me, you know, uh, <laughs> His, his body armor that saved him. So, so how long were you guys down there? Like, what was your what was the timeline? Uh, it was only a few weeks. So we jumped in on the twentieth of December, and we were out of there by mid January. Oh, okay. So it was really fast. Um, we were in and out of there pretty fast. Yeah. Um, were you guys? Uh, did you go to Noriega's place at all, or were you, was that? Not good? <laughs> So, you know, some of those other little things that we did, you know, I, I remember one place we rolled up on, um, we, um, a, it was a warehouse full of weapons. Um, we took a place like that. And then um, I did go to his, so on Rio Hato, he had a house there. I went down there um, uh, to help with a uh, bomb damage assessment. They wanted to see how well the F-117s did. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So I went in there and uh I don't know if they still have it at the one at the 17th, but I took some stuff out of his desk. It was a pen and some currency or something like that. A couple of other little yeah. things. And I, then I donated it to the 17th when I left. If you remember that little heritage thing we had, yep, I had a pile of stuff in there from Panama that I got out of one of Noriega's uh, places. Nice. Um, there was another place that we took down that we found. Uh, and this is exactly why that guy needed to be, taken down you know we yeah. found um some videotapes and so uh they threw them in the thing and it was it was nor noriega and his cronies they would have sex with these uh young girls or these young guys and then kill them afterwards and they, would, they videotaped it all i mean like, what kind of sick people do that sort of thing but um so you know stuff like that, that, you know, yeah. those things were in the, his little offices or whatever, his little places or his houses or whatever. So they get to do a little bit of that. Um, but it, so we had, a, it was short and sweet. Um, I hate that uh, we took any casualties. We had uh, some guys who gave that all ultimate sacrifice. Uh, yeah. And those are the guys you never forget. 